Okay, so that's basically you know how you can create your own API. Today you're gonna see how to build custom automations using APIs and Python within Zapier and make.com. And also you can use JavaScript and whatever code you would like to use. There is three options here. And what I'm doing here is I'm just calling this address. I'm doing a post request and you know I'm, I'm sending it. So in this example, let's say I want to take a name from social media, a name of profile, specifically Twitter X, because I built some, I did another video about this, about building a bot that is basically qualifying automatically on Twitter. And one of the things I implemented there is like removing this emojis so here we can see the function i created which basically you have one function remove emojis from text you get some input some text from the uh, from from the user and you get back the result which is without emojis and if we'll take a look at what it's actually doing so you have this api gateway and you can connect it later to and then it, it's, it's connecting to this code and you can also have layers. So you can have like libraries that are not come, that don't come with Python, which from what I've seen on Zapier, you cannot do this. And then, you know, this endpoint, it's the endpoint that we are calling. And this is like the endpoint and we use it to, to call it. So we can use, you know, make to call it. We can use Zapier to call this. So if you have a lot of uh, you know automations on Zapier, you can just add a step that is calling this API. And other cool things that you can do is you know later on if you want to build something custom, you know get rid of all the automations and save costs and so on, you can then turn off this API gateway and you can add different triggers um, that will help you build something more internal. Yeah, so we can run it pretty quickly. So you know I, I'm taking this endpoint. I took this is the input okay so i gave it a lot of a lot of emojis i'm doing okay i'm running this module and you can see the result is this was the text the result is without emojis thank you for watching this video if you have more questions and if you need more things or if you need help to set up something like this, in that case, you can send me a message on Boring Sass Guy on Twitter or an email to jonathanmiser at gmail.com. And these are the things we need to think about when we actually implement systems like that, which is like security, costs, scalability, flexibility, and trace log. And I'll tell you what I mean by trace log. Now, I'm gonna start with the option number one, which is a bit more technical, but I'm assuming that if you wanna do something technical, you're gonna have someone to write scripts for you, something custom. And I would start with cloud function, AWS, and here I actually, you can see the pricing, and you can see all the pricing of the other methods as well. But in terms of the pricing, like it really depends on how many requests you can have, but it's actually pretty flexible and it can have a lot of calls um, pretty cheap. The other benefit of cloud functions is, first of all, it's scalable. Okay, you can add as many, as much code as, as you want. It's flexible. You have a trace log. What does it mean a trace log? You can have a code base where basically all your scripts are stored and you can see the history. So if you make changes and so on, you add stuff and you want to go back, you can go back and so on and so on. And you can do everything that you can do with code, you can basically do with a cloud function, which if we compare Zapier code, which we'll take a look also in this video, you cannot do this. Like in Zapier, you can do more basic stuff, but if you are looking for something uh, long-term, then you will need to use something more serious. So if I'll give you the example that I'm showing you here, what basically I'm doing, it's you can do it with Make, you can do it with Zapier, but serverless, also I forgot to talk about security because you can also um, add a layer of security for these uh, serverless functions that if you have something sensitive, you can make sure that only certain types of, you know, people can access this uh, Lambda cloud function and basically it's gonna be used as an API. So you're gonna create your own API using 
cloud functions. And what I'm doing here is I'm just calling this address. I'm doing a post request and you know I'm, I'm sending it. So in this example, let's say I want to take a name from social media, a name of profile, specifically Twitter X, because I built some, uh, I did another video about this, about building a automated, about building a bot that is basically qualifying automatically on Twitter. And one of the things I implemented there is like removing these emojis. So here we can see the function I created, which basically you have one function, remove emojis from text, you get some input, some text from the, uh, from, from the user, and you get back the result, which is without emojis. And if we'll take a look at what it's actually doing, so you have this API gateway, and you can connect it later to, and then it, it's, con it's connecting to this code, and you can also have layers. So you can have like libraries that are not, come, that don't come with, Python, which from what I've seen on Zapier, you cannot do this. And then, you know, this endpoint, it's the endpoint that we are calling. And this is like the endpoint and we use it to, to call it. So we can use, you know, make to call it. We can use Zapier to call this. So if you have a lot of, uh, you know, automations on Zapier, you can just add a step that is calling this API. And other cool things that you can do is, you know, later on, if you want to build something custom, you know, get rid of all the automations and save costs and so on, you can then turn off this API gateway and you can add different triggers um, that will help you build something more internal. Yeah, so we can run it pretty quickly. So, you know, I, I'm taking this endpoint. I took, this is the input. Okay, so I gave it a lot of, a lot of emojis. I'm doing okay. I'm running this module. And you can see the result is, this was the text, the result is without emojis. The other option you have is I took the same code, I pasted it here on Zapier. And on Zapier, I think it's pretty new. You have this new step that you can run code. And actually let's try to run it here. So you have like, you can write code, code by Zapier and you can choose what you want to do here. So you can choose an event, you can run JavaScript, you can run Python. And as I said, it's very limited. You can start with this and then move to AWS Lambda or you, you don't have to use AWS Lambda. You can also use Google Cloud Functions. You can use the uh, Azure La uh, Cloud Functions as well. I don't know how they call it. Um, and you can run your things. And here we can see the same code and the output is the same. And if we run like a quick test, what basically I give it, I give it, I just added some emojis. I give it like test, two emojis, and I run the test and I do retest. And here you can see the name is test. And here we can see the logs. So if we'll take a look at the code, what we are doing here, it's we are doing print. And so on. Now, this is really like, if you look at this compared to AWS Lambda, this is like a toy. It's cool that they added this and you can also take a look here at the documentation on the things you can do here. Now, if you take a look at this link, Python code examples in Zaps, you can see some cool functionality you can do here, which is like, you can get an input from the previous step. You can call an API. You can, you can uh, have some logs and so on. Uh, divide all these things. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link below that you can take a look. And there is some cool functionalities you can do and it can take you to a certain point. But if you are watching this and you've got to a point that you need automations in that scale, like you need something unique, you need some library, you need things that you cannot do with the, all the zaps and all the requests that you currently have, then if you are already doing this move, I would recommend or I, what I would do is I would go to, uh, I would start, you know, thinking about cloud functions. Um, you also have like logs, okay? So every everything is monitored here, okay? You have like logs that you can keep and you can take a look at each call. So CloudWatch logs, you have code here. You can test the things before you do them. And the process of creating a new cloud function is simple and you, can, and you don't need even code to do this. All you need is AWS account 
they also give like a free tier and so on. You go and you click create function. You can use different options here. You can call, you can give it a name. Then you have like the types of languages you want to use. So really, it's really flexible here compared to Zapier, which we can see all, we can see different types of languages. We can see like a lot of spectrum of languages that we can use. You can choose the architecture of the system. You don't need to touch it. Here you can create some roles and things like that and give permissions and people can do the, like who can, which users can do all the things and limit the options in advanced. You can go and you can tick this on and it will already enable HTTP, HTTPS endpoints. Uh, I'll, I'll do this in a different step. You can add tags and you can add VPC, which again, it's like, let's say you have different resources on AWS. You have your server or something and you want them to access uh, the, the Lambda will be able to access these private resources. Then you can enable this and you can choose your VPC, um, which is also related to security. So then you do create function and I need to fix this. So my func, I do create function. And this is the layout that you are gonna see. And you, you start with that and here a simple view to add your code you have this handler that is getting events and this is how you communicate with outside um, entities, let's call it like this, like Zapier, make different entities, like users and so on. So you get this out of the bat. And if you wanna add triggers and you wanna call it from outside and create your own API, you essentially go and you choose one of these options. Now you can see that you have tons of options here. Um, and you can also connect, now that I see, you can connect all sorts of different applications as well. Um, but what you want to choose is you want to choose API Gateway. You want to create a new API. Here you just leave it if you don't want to secure it. You just leave it alone. And also keep in mind that only the people that have the address, I mean, if you don't share it publicly, no one can know. Let's add. Let's keep it open so everyone can access it and add. And here we can see the endpoint. So if we click it, we see hello from Lambda, okay? And we can take this thing, we can do a get request. So this is essentially a get request. We can take it to make and it will give us the same output. And you can see here the, the details. Now, you know, it, it starts everything for security purposes with this, you know, gibberish with this uh, sequence. So people cannot know this uh, right off the bat. Um, so, you know, unless you post it somewhere, I don't see how people can see it. Um, yeah, that's essentially what you do. So layers here, what if you want to add some, you know, custom resources. So for example, I built this code that it's taking a Twitter profile. Sometimes people write some locations or you know, shortcuts of locations. So I took this text, I send it to a library that can figure out the location and get me back the country. But it's not coming from custom JavaScript or Python. So you can do add layer. So you can add like custom layers. You, you have some, you have layers that come from AWS, so we can choose them here. It's also a little bit limited. You have also custom layers. What usually people do, they only connect it to a code review tool. For example, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, which all the code is stored there. And you can see all the history of the versions. It's a versioning code uh, tool that you upload it automatically. In every change, it will upload it automatically to the Lambda and it will store it there. And you have the options of having extra libraries. Okay, so that's basically, you know, how you can create your own API. And final option that you can keep in mind is the Zero Code Kit which I don't have much experience with it, but it's worth, you know, looking at it. And um, basically you can go and you can click on this uh, make integration. They might have one for Zapier as well. And they have like custom codes that you can use here, like, you know, use this uh, AI, translate stuff, writing your own code. So you can write like a JavaScript code, you can run Python code. And now that I look at this, I see like they have a lot of custom built for you things that you can do that 
maybe don't come with Zapier and make, and you can use them uh, instead of writing your own code. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, so these are the three options. If you want to build custom automations, you can use Cloud Function, AWS Lambda, or whatever uh, service you want to use, Google, Azure, whatever. You can use Zapier code with their integration, and you can use Zero Code Kit. Thank you for watching this video. If you have more questions and if you need more things, or if you need help to set up something like this, you have a few complex integrations with Zapier or make.com or something like this, and you want to add something more custom and add your own code. In that case, you can send me a message on Boring Sass Guy on Twitter, Boring Sass Guy, or an email to jonathanmiser at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the other ones. Bye.